Our scripture reading tonight is from the third chapter of the letter of Ephesians, verses 14 through 21. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of God's glory, God may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through God's spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or ever imagine, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Holy wisdom, holy word, thanks be to God. We have friends who have a celebration every August 5th. It celebrates the day in 1994 when after an anxious nine-month wait, our friends drove to the San Francisco airport port to pick up an orphan named King, Kim Myung-hoon, a nine-month-old with bright eyes and a beautiful smile. 
Every August 5th, our friends celebrate Gotcha Day when their son, who they now called, call Colin, when he became theirs. Gotcha Day. It's not a birthday, but then it sort of is. It's a rebirth day, a day when they went from a family of two to a family of three. That little life from halfway around the planet changed their lives in an instant. He filled a gap they didn't even know they had. That moment turned them upside down or right side up, just with a simple smile and a reach from the hands that had held him across that long flight from South Korea into their hands and into their hearts. Our friends described an odd moment in the whole process when they met with a judge to formalize the adoption. The legalese they described was stunning to say the, say the least. One friend, one phrase that stood out in our friend's mind over all the others was, whereas over time they learned to love him. My friend almost interrupted and said, excuse me, but, but no. No, there was no overtime thing here. It was an instant in the luggage area of the San Francisco International Airport, watching and waiting anxiously for all the passengers to walk through those doors and then to set eyes on the child who will be, who is their child. In an instant, he was theirs. He was theirs. They were his, his family, just like that. They didn't need to learn to love him. They needed to learn to live with him. And there's some, that's something they're still doing to this day because he changes all the time, just like we all do. They, didn't, needed, they needed to learn how to express their love and how to respond to their love. But the love itself was a gift a moment of grace that came from somewhere or someone else. For this reason, the author of Ephesians opens our passage today. What's the reason? Well, he spends the first part of the letter explaining that reason. It's because of the immeasurable grace of God. Because in that grace, all are welcome and all are included, all. And for Paul, all means all. Some of the rest of them had to struggle with all. Surely not the Gentiles, they said. Surely not the pagans. Surely not our enemies. Surely not those whose lives are just way too different from ours, who don't speak our language, who don't dress like we do, think like we do, work like we do. Not all, surely. No, Paul says. All means all. Paul prays that we might have power, that power that comes from the Holy Spirit as we are being rooted and grounded in love. We receive, as we, as, as we are being rooted and grounded in love, we receive the capacity to love through grace. It's a gift. Boom. Instant. Like a new life awaiting you in an airport terminal. But it takes time to learn to live that life of love. It takes effort. It takes moving forward and falling back again. It takes success and failure to learn to live a life of love. We are being rooted and grounded in love. Being rooted. We're not done. As soon as we think we're done, as soon as we think we've got it, well, then we've lost it. Hold on to the Christ who dwells within. It's like what happened that first gotcha day all those years ago with my friends. They were filled up with love and joy and happiness, but also with concerns and worries and needs to be met. Paul calls it being filled with the fullness of God. Blessing and possibility, yes. Suffering and hurt, also, God doesn't call this an easy life, but a full life, a deep life, a life that struggles with how to love, but is driven by a certainty that loving is a better way to live, even if we don't always know how it's all going to work out. Friends, will you pray with me 
as we too live into this same fullness. Loving God, I give you thanks that you have taught us to love by loving us first. Help us know how to live into that fullness, into its uncertainty, into its joy, and to live and show that love to others. Amen. May you run and not be weary. May your heart be filled with song. And may the love of God continue to give you hope and keep you strong. And may you run and not be weary. May your heart be filled with joy. And may the road you travel always lead you home. May you run and not be weary. May your heart be filled with song. And may the love of God continue to give you hope and keep you strong. And